Uh, good evening and uh, uh, welcome you all to this uh, fabulous and incredible topic. Today, the most wanted and less discussed topic, small joints arthroplasty. Uh, thanks to Dr. Minami Kawa and Dr. Hamada, who has been the, the brain behind this uh, interesting topic and the webinar. And uh, they have made it possible, and we will definitely have a great webinar today. Thanks, Dr. Bharat. Finest microsurgeon and a brachial back surgeon in India joining us and moderating the session. And a special thanks and my appreciation to our honorable president of India, Indian Orthopedic Society, Dr. Shiva Shankar, who has been very supportive in all endeavors. Thank you, one and all. Welcome to this interesting webinar. Thank you, Dr. Terence Jose. It's wonderful to have so many Japanese faculty headed by the Japanese hand surgery president, Dr. Yoshitaka Mina Mikawa, and other panelists who will be sharing their vast experience with uh, our national colleagues in India. Congratulations to Bharat Kadadi also for being the moderator to get the things done uh, from them. And I welcome all of you without much ado. I would like to set the ball rolling. I'll hand over the mic to Dr. Bharat Kadari. Thank you, uh, Dr. Terence, Dr. Shushankar. To all the Japanese colleagues, Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. To all. And Namaste to all of them. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Konnichiwa. So it was way back in 2007, I did my fellowship with uh, Dr. Doi, Dr. Kozutori Doi and Dr. Hattori at uh, Shin Yamagoshi. Yeah. yeah. I know them. Ogiridaichi Hospital at Shin Yamagoshi. And then after I came back to Bangalore in 2008, I started uh, doing this uh, PAP and MCP joint uh, replacement for almost 10 years. And since the last two to three years, we have a little issue in procuring, I think, with our uh, friendship with the colleagues from the East, I think we should be able to do that in the near future. <laughs> Without wasting much time, we go on to the first speaker, Yashitaka Minamikawa, is from the Namba Hand Center. He went to the US early for his training. After he became the orthopedic surgeon, he's a pioneer in finger joint replacements and also in rheumatoid hand surgery. Over to you, Dr. Yoshitaka Minamikawa, to speak on the history and future of PAP joint processes. Thank you. Okay, can I say some few words now? Yep, yeah. yes. go ahead, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Good evening, doctors in India and friend, friends, and maybe good morning to the friend in America, because Thank I sent so many mails to American friends. So if they are here to listen, good morning. I'm first of all I thank Dr. Jerome to organizing this opportunity, and also thanks Dr. Hamada. He's organizing every detail for this meeting. And for me, this is new because I have a couple of times have opportunity to speak as a remote, but organizing with like this and talk not just face to face, but from this in the web, it is very interesting. And th this is the proper way to go for the in the future more often. Um, my talk is about small finger joint. This is not popular probably in India. But you know, today PC Ho is presenting. I was there to to help his cases from microsurgery or, and so on. That was almost 15 years ago. So it took me 20 years to get people to know my implant. So it is very it takes time and very difficult. But now you have a lot of microsurgery cases and trauma cases, but also you have a 
aged people. So you need to treat some degenerative condition. Of course, in the hip, knee, but even small joint. So if you need, you like this implant, Dr. Hamada is willing to visit you again and show you. Okay, Dr. Jerome, may I start? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Arigato Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Jerome, everyone. I would like to start my talk, History and Future of the PIP Implant Arthroplasty. This figure shows the beginning of finger implant in Harry phase. Hinged implant was introduced as early as 1953, which was 20 years earlier than total knee arthroplasty and 10 years earlier than total hip arthroplasty. Single stem metal implant by Brannon and Klein were used for 10 soldiers without bone cement. However, early implant losing and breakage were found. Platt modified single stem with more flexible and longer twin stems for better fixation and extensively used for rheumatoid cases. Hinge implant arrows only single plane not the rotational torque and lateral stress. Breakage of either implant or bone were observed in most cases. Within 10 years, one piece silicon spacer were introduced before complete failure of hinged implant. Swanson and Nibawa developed silicon implant almost simultaneously, but different in design and mechanism in early 1960s. Swanson implant allowed piston motion within intramedullary cavities. Because C-shaped center held the joint space apart and provided some intrinsic extension. Following the success of total hip arthroplasty, many metal and plastic implants were produced. The his implant was on the market as shown in the ads on Journal of Hand Surgery in 1977. This implant was filled with knowledge and experience of doctors in Mayo Hand Group. Sefi's implant was metal and plastic implant designed for MP joint. Had ball and socket structure, but hinge mechanism with single axis. There was some play in lateral direction. Provided lateral stability when the joint fully flexed. Offset joint help flexor and extensor strength. Three modifications as mark one, two, and three with different stem position, shape, and length were made in short interval. However, loosening between cement and bone interface were found in many cases. Metal and plastic implant in third generation used cement for stem fixation and added some constraint. What they done was any constraint in joint itself created stress to cement bone interface and the result was implant loosening. Doctors of Mayo and others and failure of constrained implant and change direction towards surface. Both Linscheid and Beckenbau have started use of surface implant with different materials. Only 
Soon the Swanson implant enjoyed popularity for a long time until now. However, in 1986, Dr. Pimer reported destructive cyanobitis following cytostatic arthroplasty of scaphoid. After this report, numerous papers for silicon cyanobitis are published next 10 years. And stimulated another enthusiasm of finger implant development. When the entire world was skeptical against silicon, I started my research with Dr. Paima in the US. The project was put silicon implants to Rabbit's knee. Half promet did not prevent implant rupture. Specimen after 12 months showed cystic lesion in the canal and erosion in femoral condyle. Another study was put the great toe implant to Rabbit's knee and analyzed the X-ray and pathological changes. One to three months after implantation, there was nine formation around the stems. Pathological specimen showed the active liner bone formation by implant motion. This line became irregular and modulus at 9 and 16 months. Thinking of the implant was apparent at 16 months. Pathology showed rough and eroded liner bone. In higher magnification, there are inflammatory cells and multinuclear giant cells around small substances, which was proved as silicon particle by X-ray spectrometry. I would like everyone to remember the particle whenever you see the end steel region is silicon. Only silicon implant continued to develop. Swanson implant has changed material several times, used half grommets to full grommets, and still one of the most popular finger implants ever used. Neva was attempt to attach to the bone using the chrome mesh had succeeded, but the result was high fracture at the hinge. However, this design continued to suffer and Avanta and also to new flex. New flex implant, preflex design by Arnold Peter Weiss was reported in 1999. He came to Japan as Banner Traveling Fellow and presented his early experience. His brilliant idea included for 60 degrees of motion, need 30 degrees of extension and 30 degrees of flexion. This decreases stress to the hinge, less piston motion, and improve functional range of motion. Also minimizing abrasion, less particle with large color design leads to less sinking. One of the most comprehensive review paper was this 25th anniversary presentation in Journal of Hand Surgery by Dr. Lee Scheid in 2000. He wrote historical aspect of implant development 
problem of hinge and open socket mechanism. Reflection about Steffi's failure and development of his surface depressment. Surface finger also plastic produced by inside has several characteristics. Minimum bone dissection preserves soft tissues and anatomical joint congruity. All of this provides stability and physiological motion. His SRA, supported by several research and experience, had spread worldwide in relatively short time. Another surface implant from Mayo was pyrocarbon implant by Dr. Beckenbau. Same surface concept, but different materials. Current model of press fit fixation have been approved worldwide and extensively used. But outcome, quite high loosening were reported. Even after reported failure, probably because of limited choice, pyrocarbon are still used worldwide and division cases are increasing. Reflex MP implant with silicon exactly match the osteotomy line was made for division by Integra. This implant is now available for the PIP joint. What about PIP surface replacement? Because of loosening and post-op stiffness, Linscheid modified the stem to press fit osseo integration. This attempt was not clever. Results after modification found more loosening and breakage. When Linscheid realized failure of press fit osseo integration, it was too late to go back. Since this implant was already sold from Avanta to SBI and to Striker, his voice no longer reached to the company. Dean Shai's concept of surface implant were absolutely right and supported by others. Then what's the issues of failure? Two main issues. Difficult to keep enough tension of collateral ligament. Stem fixation. Questionable if precise cementing and press fit fixation can be possible for small finger bone. Why these implants dislocate so easily? Tension of the collateral ligament are depending on the amount of bone dissection, therefore difficult to control. Osseo integration using titanium screw by Lundborg. They used both MP and PIP joint and achieved osseo integration rate over 90%. However, silicon hinge were broken as expected. Next generation used twin spring for the joint. Excellent results were reported, but not popularized at this moment. I combined osseo integration and surface joint. This shows component of self-locking finger joint. Cobalt chrome head and plastic socket are connected to square recess of joint anchor. Titanium joint anchor has a tapered screw with expandable legs. Stem position can be adjustable during surgery, thus control collateral tension. Variation for PIP 
MP and some MP joints are available. Not all PAP is press fit stem with hydroxyapatite coating. Very precise surgical instruments are provided. Also, polyethylene bearing insert is pre assembled. Tactis PAP from France has hydroxyapatite stem with press fit congruity. Capflex PAP from Germany have titanium short stem also integration. Both provide modular head and socket combination to control collateral tension. As conclusion, other than silicon, direction for a true implant for PIP joint, a surface with osseo integration as instructed by Dr. Lin Scheid. Thank you, uh, Dr. Minamu Mikawa, for the excellent uh, coverage of the spectrum of uh, the available implants, starting from the history to the future of the PAP joint and replacement arthroplasty. So, as uh, we have more talks coming up, I think we'll have a discussion at the end of the uh, talks. <laughs> Going on to the next talk. We have a, system, uh, a systemic review of implant arthroplasty for PAP. Osteoarthritis updated 2021 by of Magoya University. Hey everyone. Emma as you all know, is the young leader of Nagoya Hand team. He went to Michigan, Kevin for two years. A very smart and active man. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Nice to listen to you. Please, over to you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I, I want to talk about a systematic review of implant plastic for PFP joint. So because there are little, very little evidence about PIP implants. So I will uh, conduct this systematic review. And also, I want to show you uh, our plan of prospective observational study. So please start our presentation. Thank you. A systematic review of implant arthroplasty for PIP osteoarthritis, updated for 2021. Department of Hand Surgery, Nagoya University, Michio Yamamoto. Prevalence of hand away is high. According to the Ranking of Osteoarthritis Study, hand OA begins to increase from the age of 40 and over reaching almost 100% for women after the age of 80 and 96% for men. In the Japanese cohort study, hand OA was found in almost 100% after age 70. This is more prevalent than reported in the US. For a long time, Hand OA was a forgotten disease, resulting in a paucity of clinical trials to guide recommendations. However, in recent years, Hand OA has attracted more attention and new data have become available. Therefore, EURA updated the previous 2007 recommendations in 2018. A systematic literature review was performed, collecting the evidence for hand OA. Finally, they created the comprehensive guidelines. While high evidence recommendations regarding non-pharmacological and pharmacological treatment are shown, the level of evidence for surgery remains at the level of expert opinion. Although there is a description about arthroplasty for PIPOA in the text, 
No controlled trials of surgery for interphalangeal OA have been published so far. We have conducted systematic reviews of implant arthroplasty for PFPOA to accumulate evidence. This time, we summarize the papers reported by 2020 and update the evidence of implant arthroplasty for PIPOA. Since articles up to 2015 were summarized and published to PRS in 2017, we re evaluated by adding five years to 2020. Implants were classified into silicone or surface replacement and the treatment results were calculated for each approach. Adults with degenerative or post-traumatic PIPOA were included. Papers that cover only inflammatory arthritis were excluded. Currently, unavailable implants were excluded. PIP joint arco motion, extension lag, and re-operation rate were set as outcomes. It's five o'clock. Results. Arc of motion of the PAP joint acquired by the silicone blur approach was 17 degrees, which was the best result. The acquired arc of motion was 10 degrees with the surface replacement dorsal approach. The extension lag angle was 5 degrees for the silicon blur approach, which was the best, and 13 degrees for the surface replacement dorsal approach. And the revision rate was lowest with the silicon blur approach. It was 6% at an average of 42 months. The revision rate with the surface replacement dorsal approach was 70% at an average of 49 months. Based on the results of the systematic review, we mainly use the broad approach of silicon implants. Here is a case. This patient is a 77-year-old woman with PIPOA on the left ring finger. Preoperatively, the PAP joint of the left ring finger was so painful that surgery was requested. The range of motion of the left ring finger PAP joint before surgery was 60 degrees flexion and minus 30 degrees extension. Surgery was performed and uh, actually broke. A3 pulley is incised with a broad approach to grow in the PIP joint. The proximal phalanx head was rejected and a silicone implant was inserted. The broad plate was repaired and closed the skin. One year after the surgery, there was no pain and the range of motion of PIP improved to 80 degrees flexion and minus 10 degrees extension. Silicon polar approach was the best outcomes about arc of motion of the PIP joint, extension lag, and complication rate. However, there are several limitations of this systematic review. Number one is lack of data about silicon fracture. Number two is that we analyzed various types of surface replacement as one group. However, in the current situation where there is no prospective comparative study, we need to refer to the results of this systematic review. In the future, 
we had a plan of prospective man center study using a core outcome measure set. We will build evidence by aggregating actual data as in systematic review. Cost utility analysis using EQ5D is included in this study to compare cost effectiveness with other joint replacement surgery, such as total hip arthroplasty or total knee arthroplasty. This prospective study will contribute to a sustainable health economy. Furthermore, it will be useful for the development of new anatomical implants. I show you our study design. This study is an observational study rather than an interventional study because it is assigned to the treatment group according to the patient's wishes without randomization. The most appropriate treatment is selected according to the patient's wishes at each institution. After obtaining informed consent, this observational study involves a minimum of two years of follow-up. We collect the data such as type of implant and approach, motion, complication, and pain, EQ5D, and direct cost. We set hand 10 as a primary outcome. Hand 10 is a 10 item questionnaire with explanatory illustrations to assess upper extremity disorders. We also set EQ5D, arc of motion, grip strength, numeric rating scale for pain, complication, and direct and secondary outcomes. The data we collect is simple and easy, which makes it easier to continue the study. Post analysis is helpful to assess the efficiency, the priorities, and the value of an intervention. There are many types of cost analysis. Cost utility analysis is one form. We can compare different health outcomes by measuring a single unit chlorine. Cost utility analysis is Someone said, No, 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 I think at the last of the product we couldn't hear, but I, I said. Uh, Bharat, uh, just wait for a second. Uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. P.C. Ho and uh, uh, Dr. Ravi Mahajan, uh, the uh, president of uh, Indian Society of the Surgery of the Hand here. Um, welcome, uh, Dr. P.C. Ho and uh, the president. Uh, it's good to have you. Welcome, Dr. P.C. and the president. It's, it's a great honor for us to have you here. Uh, Dr. Bharat, please go ahead. 
Sorry for the hiccup. <laughs> I found it difficult to get into the links. Finally, I did it. Thank you very much. Very nice yeah, to see you. Oh, no. Thank you. Most yeah. welcome, uh, Dr. PC. Nice to uh, see you this evening. Yes, me too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dr. Michiro Imamoto, for the excellent uh, outcome. And uh, that with the OLAR approach, although we are commonly used to doing the dorsal approach to the extent set and splitting. Next, we have uh, Yoshiaka Hamada. Yes. Who, yeah, who is from the Kansai, the firm, famous Kansai uh, Medical University and the Medical Center, Japan. So, the single punchline is your friend. The strong point is anything. <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to, to speak on our surgical strategy and techniques of implant arthroplasty of the PAP joint. Yoshiaka Hamada, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. It's my great pleasure for me. I can present my experience today. I believe uh, surface implant arthroplasty can overcome silicon near future. I believe, and and also I recommend dorsal central approach is easy and simple. For uh, therefore, I recommend refractory cases dorsal central splitting. Please start my presentation. Okay. Can you hear? There are various such car approach. The ball are by Dr. Jerome, can should I speak? Audience cannot hear. Is that right? Quite nice. Okay. Central splitting approach abbreviated DCSA is technically easy, giving a wide view with easy orientation. This is published uh, recently. Jerome? Okay. The audience cannot hear. Classical nice, nice. Pro DCSA provide easy access. Uh, Dr. Good Hamada. view uh, your yes. your audio will work now. You you can uh, you just uh, watch the audio. It will go it will go nonstop. Just watch it. Okay. But this is by easy access. Can you hear now? View and easy okay. identification of components such as collateral ligaments, abbreviated COL. This center figure shows the surgical exposure. The articular surface was exposed through a longitudinal split of the central slip with further volar exploration. Serial release started from the dorsal tendon to joint capsule, including collateral ligament and block, like a pairing of fluid, sharply incised down to the periosteum using such a viva blade from proximal to distally. The joint was then exposed by elevating the central tendon, including capsule, into flaps, radially and ulnary. Although stable COL is not necessary, we just try to preserve the longitudinal elements. In finger joint prosthesis, there are 
major two types, fins type and surface replacement arthroplasties. This slide shows my implant selection. Even in the affected PIP due to OA or trauma, silicone is widely used due to its convenience and stable short-term results. By clearing the fit folds, I would like to show that the surface replacement is excellent due to its physiological motion with stability against the lateral stress. Our senior also developed non-constrained PIP cementless implant SLFJ. The advantage is that the joint anchor is stable for a long time and physiological motion and stability against lateral stress. As a weak point, removal of joint anchor is difficult. The previous overall results are shown. Pain reduction was excellent. The short-term recovery of the affected PIP joint ROM was good, average 60 degrees. However, long-term ROM was reduced due to recurrent stiffness resulting in contractures. Some cases, except severe hypertrophic OA or flexion contractures after trauma, show the excellent long-term results over 10 years, as shown in this slide. Troubles due to loosening where debris or subluxation are quite rare in all cases. I also experienced a case in which the arc became poor due to recurrent osteophyte formation at an early stage, and surgery was performed again and again. From the experience of recent hundred implant surgeries, we found that three patterns of the change of the arc are shown in this slide. Vertical axis indicate the arc, and horizontal axis indicate the time after surgery. Cases with no vigorous bone outgrowth without hypertrophic osteophytes or bony spots, including erosive arthritis, have a good cause with long term. However, vigorous hypertrophic osteophytes or bony spots can recur after the surgery within a short interval. Another poor outcome, early flexion contracture was observed in a few percentages. I will show the causes and the surgical countermeasures against this early flexion contracture in the later part. Poor clinical outcomes observed from early stages were due to insufficient surgery, residual osteophyte tendon fusion due to overlooked trigger finger, and so on. A stiffness such as a recurrent osteophyte formation leading to contracture. We have applied modified DCSA on refractory cases as an initial trial from four years ago. But now it becomes a standard due to its advantage for patients as well as surgeons. This slide shows the planning to osteotomy and removal of osteophytes. This arm block cutting using microbones so at the base of middle phalanx, including the dorsal rib, improved the extension arc. After elevating the COLs, removal of osteophytes improved the general appearance. Don't forget to remove the volar and far proximal area of the proximal phalanx in a case with evident bony prominence shown by yellow arrow. After setting joint anchor, do not forget to remove osteophyte completely. This slide shows the planning using the X-rays of imperfect one. As you can see this slide, the far proximal volar osteophyte neighboring the neck of the proximal head and osteophyte under COLs are up to inadequate. Existing this volar osteophyte in this far proximal area grows gradually and limits flexion during a few years. We are overshaving this specific area by surgical bow in hypertrophic cases during on 
and of the surface parts. From this dorsal window, flexor tendon can be released if necessary. Collateral ligament repair is simple in our procedure. After setting all implants, check the lateral stability at PIP extension. If the examiner care about the lateral stability, after removal of the surface parts, suture figure eight fashion by nylon thread. And after setting the surface parts again, tighten the nylon thread to add the lateral stability. Finally, the central slip is reattached through a drill holes created at the dorsal side of the base of the middle phalanx to improve the extension arc. But this is not always necessary. According to the post-operative rehabilitation protocol, keep PIP extension minimum one week and both PIP and DIP extension three weeks at night. Passive stretch by sprint was gradually increased. We take care not to prevent extension lag most. Overall results, average PIP arc spread from 30 degrees before surgery to 74 degrees after the surgery. The recovery rate was better than volar approach. General appearance was improved and patient satisfaction was high. Complications. As a complication, extension lag of the DIP joint occur due to overextensor advancement. Thereafter, one lateral cord was released and continuous three weeks extension both PIP and DIP at night sprint to prevent this. Flexion contracture of the PIP joint occurred early after the surgery. Attenuation of the central slip, but not flexor tenosynovitis was observed in these cases. After correction of flexural contracture by cutting the check line ligament, both sides of FDS were transferred to the extensor lateral to central band. Improvement of the arc was obtained. In this case, Adherence and surface degeneration of the flexor tendon around A1 pulley due to missed severe trigger finger seem to cause this early flexion contracture. The same procedure, FDS transfer after correction of flexion contracture, improved this condition. I will show some case presentations. This 59-year-old woman had more than 10 years of history of her stiff ulnar three fingers. Radical removal of osteophyte extended osteotomy line, flexor tendon release, and the implant setting and the loose tension, but not too tight, were important to spread the ROM. She was satisfied with continuous improved arc during 2.5 years follow-up. She said her middle finger by EDCSA approach was better than her ring finger by volar approach due to less stiffness. This 61-year-old woman had more than 20-year history of all four finger contracture with no more pain. She hoped the improvement of arc and general appearance of her fingers Vigorous resection of osteophyte and bony spur is evident by serial X-ray. And serial CT scan also showed the change to smarten her fingers around the implant. Her stiff finger obtained the arc around 60 degrees after that. This erosive hand arthritis showed acute destruction and collapsed within a few years. This kind of case also can be well treated by dorsal central approach. Bone fragments could be well corrected with a wide view. In such case, the improved dark has been well preserved more than three years with no vigorous resection of osteophyte. In the later part, 
Our colleague Dr. Toyama will present the detail of surgical technique and their original data from other patient population impact. We prefer surface implant SFFJ as PIPOA. Thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, so much, Dr. Hamada, for <clears throat> reinforcing the importance of the dorsal splitting approach and also the tips and tricks in the dorsal approach and also the excellent outcomes. We are so happy to see the excellent outcomes. Thank you. So we next go on to uh, Dr. Yashushi Morisawa. From the Saitama Hospital, so he'll be speaking on Surface, limitless surface replacement orthoplasty. Outcomes from the whole approach. Good evening. My name is Yasushi Morisawa. Uh, uh, it is great honor for me to make presentation in this program. Uh, in all cases, there is no pain. It is great. And according to the motion, a flexion range of motion increase. It is good for patient to get flexion range of motion because as to hand function, flexion range of motion is more important than extension range of motion for especially grip function. And in my opinion, for index finger, in some cases, fusion is better than TFA uh, because uh, uh, index finger is more pinch back action will worsen the function of radial collateral ligament. Mm, so, uh, PIPJ index of index finger, um, very severe OA, um, fusion is better than TFA. For the index, indication of the TFA should be more strict for other uh, than other fingers. Uh, thank you. Please, please start my slide. Outcome of cementless surface replacement arthroplasty by the polar approach for proximal interphalangeal joint osteoarthritis. This is a COI. This study includes 18 patients, 23 fingers with PIP osteoarthritis who underwent surgery in 2011 and later. And they are cases of observing more than 10 months after operation. They are three males and 15 females with a mean age of 66 years old at the time of surgery. Surgeries were involved the index finger in two, middle finger in eight, ring finger in 12, and little finger in one case, and were performed by a boral approach in all cases. The implant is a self locking finger joint system. The mean Post-operative follow-up period is 58 months. The evaluation parameters include joint range of motion, both preoperative and at final follow-up. Symptoms: the Mayo Clinic scar, three grades, dislocation, loosening, and thinning from X-ray, and complications. In operation, oral zigzag incision and protect digital nerves. At the S3 pulley to one side. and reflect the S3 pulley within the flexor tendon. Cut the boral plate then osteotomy of the proximal phalanx head at the distal level of the attached site of collateral ligament. After resection of the proximal flanx head, the 
use starter oil, lemur, and rasp. Make a hole until proper size. Then insert proper size joint anchor. Next, make a hole at the middle flank and insert proper size joint anchor. Using X ray helps us to make hole at the proper position. Shave the bone around the joint anchor. Put a trial and try to move the finger. While moving the finger, adjust the insertion depth of the joint anchor. If something tight, we shape the surface of the joint and move the finger again. Check the range of motion, tightness and stability again and again. When good range of motion and tightness are obtained, rear implant is pushed on. range of motion obtained. Repair the A3 pulley with four bell nylon and closer is done. After operation, put post two days with body taping, active range of motion exercise will start. Post 2.5 weeks, gentle passive range of motion exercise will start. This is Mayo Clinic score. There are three grades. Results. Range of motion Pre-operation extension, minus 14 degree. Flexion, 59 degree. Final follow-up extension, minus 21 degree. Flexion, 79 degree. Acquired range of motion degree was 13 degree. Pain relieved in all patients. As to Mayo Clinic score, good 17, fair 4, poor 1, no dislocation. Two cases have complications. One index finger, loosening, and revision, but re loosening occurred. After all, fusion operation was performed. One middle finger, X ray showed loosening, but no pain and no worsening of the range of motion. Just observing was adapted. This is case one. 70 years old female, left middle finger, PIP osteoarthritis, preoperation range of motion was minus 10 degree extension, 40 degree flexion. Her chief complaint was pain of motion. X ray showed severe osteoarthritis of the PIP joint. Total finger joint arthroplasty was done with polar approach. Post operation, 95 months, she had no pain and range of motion was 
minus 30 degree extension. Flexion, 95 degree. Hair score, good. There is no pain and problems in daily life, and the satisfaction level is high. This is case two. 60 years old female, left index finger and ring finger, PIP arthritis. She has a severe pain or motion and asked to x-ray of the index finger, severe OA. Proximal phalanx head was impacted. Total finger joint arthroplasty of the two fingers was performed simultaneously. Pain disappeared shortly after operation. Post-operation, six months, though there was mild ulnar deviation and instability of the index finger, there was no pain and good range of motion obtained. X-ray on the left, post one month after operation, there was no problem, but X-ray on the right, post six months after operation, there were slight displacement of the index proximal phalanx implant. Then observation was adapted. But one year after operation, more displacement, ulnar deviation, instability, and cross finger appeared. So I performed a revision operation. Remove the original implant and change into a larger implant for the proximal phalanx and make realignment with FDS half slip. Post one year reoperation, ulnar deviation and instability were improved, and she could pinch and no pain. Mayo score good. Post Seven years the operation for index ulnar deviation worsened, and she could not pinch, so fusion operation was performed. I removed the implant for bolar and dorsal approach, and fusion was done with the plate and iliac bone graft. Post two months after fusion, she had no pain and could pinch well. Discussion. Chief complaints in TIP osteoarthritis include pain and limited range of motion. Also, this improves pain, but range of motion is lost. Finger replacement also plasty improves both pain and range of motion after operation. All our patients had no pain, but individual differences were observed in range of motion improvement. This was related to various factors including soft tissue status, severity of preoperative contractures, motivation towards rehabilitation, and pain thresholds. We use cement thresholds surface replacement arthroplasty by bolal approach. Silicone implants are weaker, have more joint instability, and break more easily. Surface replacement arthroplasty enables better anatomical reconstruction. In addition, with cementless replacement, the implant insertion depth can be adjusted during extension and flexion in the operation. There is still some controversy regarding the surgical approach, but in our OA patients, repair of the dorsal extensor tendon is often not necessary. Moreover, a bolal approach allows earlier post-operative rehabilitation than a dorsal approach. At the case two, one index finger had ulnar deviation at six months post-operation, and a plain X-ray showed implant loosening and sinking. Usually, preoperative contractures are often more severe in osteoarthritis than in rheumatoid arthritis, while osteotomy it is necessary to make a sufficient space for implant insertion, but OA is severe. The collateral ligament is sometimes unable to be completely preserved. This can result in ulnar deviation and radial instability. In addition, index finger, unlike other fingers, is often used for pinching 
and when stress is applied to the collateral ligaments, lunar deviation and radial instability may develop. In other words, with the surgery of the index finger, the radial collateral ligament should be carefully preserved. If instability develops, repair or further treatment must be considered. When severe impaction of the head of the proximal phalanx, osteotomy with preservation of the radial collateral ligament must be difficult. And for index finger with severe OA, fusion may be considered as another option. Conclusions. We evaluated treatment outcomes in 18 patients, 23 fingers with PIP osteoarthritis who underwent cementless surface replacement, arthroplasty, by bolar approach. Preoperative pain was relieved in all patients, whereas range of motion improvement varied among patients. The bolar approach was useful in osteoarthritis. The cementless technique allowed fine adjustment of the implant depth and flexion extension balance during operation. Preserving the radial collateral ligament is important in patients with a severe way of the index finger. Thank you for your attention. Thank you uh, so much, Dr. Morizawa. <clears throat> I thank you. Thank or, you uh, including the video on the hmm. polar approach to the cementless surface replacement arthroplasty and also <clears throat> showing us the complications associated with it and the tips and tricks to manage these complications. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Our uh, next speaker needs uh, no introduction. He's Dr. <clears throat> PC Ho. Although it's always a pleasure to talk a few words about uh, PC. He graduated from the University of Hong Kong in 1987, who is currently the Chief of Service of the Department of Orthopedics and Traumatology in the Prince of Wales Hospital, as well as the Clinical Professor Honorary of the Faculty of Medicine at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. His main research interest in the hand and wrist arthroscopic surgery, others include the congenital hand differences, rheumatoid hand, paralytic hand reconstruction, and microsurgery. Who was the President of the Hong Kong Society for Surgery of the Hand in 2008 to 10? In 2012, he was awarded the Whipple Prize for recognition of his distinguished contribution to wrist arthroscopic surgery. In 2015, he was appointed as the president of the European Wrist Arthroscopic Society, 2015 to 16, as well as the founding president of the Asia Pacific Wrist Association, 2015 to 17. His academic <laughs> honors included overseas visiting expert in the orthopedic surgery at Singapore, 2012, Moberg lecturer at the 24th Scandinavian Hand Society meeting, 2012. Robert H. Hayes, visiting professor to the Stanford University 2014, the Joshi Oration for the Indian Society 2015, invited lecture to the 88th annual meeting in Japanese Orthopedic Society 2015, honored professor to the Philadelphia Hand Rehabilitation Foundation 2017, plenary speaker of the 11th APFSSH Congress 2017 in Cebu, plenary speaker of the East Japan Society for Surgery of the Hand meeting 2019, inaugural speaker of the Master Classes in Hand Center at the University of Pittsburgh 21, international guest presenter at the Australian and Surgery Society ASM in 2021, and the keynote speaker to numerous national hand and orthopedic societies, including Singapore, Japan, Korea, China, Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, India, Argentina, USA, France, Romania, Poland, Estonia, Germany since 2002. He has made around 129 publications, out of which 82 is in the wrist surgery, conducted around 114 cadaveric workshops in 23 international centers, and delivered 133 local and 578 international lectures in 97 cities of 37 countries worldwide. He is the director of the Hong Kong International Wrist Arthroscopy Workshop and Seminar since 2008. And it was certainly a pleasure to visit you in 2014 and 18 and observe the work at your uh, department. Thank you, PC Ho, over to do the honors. And uh, he will be speaking on self-locking PAP of the PAP Arthroplasty, the Hong Kong experience, self-locking finger joint in PAP Arthroplasty, the Hong Kong experience. Thank you, PC, over to you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, very, very kind introduction by Dr. Kadadi. And also thank you, um, Terence. Also Dr. Uh, Mina Makawa. I think uh, this are uh, really a wonderful experience for me to join such a uh, extraordinary meeting. Yeah, we have so much uh, famous uh, surgeon particular experience in the joint replacement. I think in the joint replacement, I'm interested, but I think my case volume is not as wide as uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Particular, many speak up today, so I, I just want to share my humble experience. 
uh, in the use of this self-locking finger joint, which is actually still in my one of my favorite uh, replacement in the hand. And particular thanks to Dr. Mindy Mikawa, who inspired me to use this implant. So today I'm I'm sharing a story of how I start using this implant, and so far what is the experience in the past twelve years. Yeah, thank you. I hope you like this lecture. Good evening, colleagues. Um, thank you very much for the very kind invitation of Dr. Mindy Mikawa for me to share my experience using the self-locking finger joint with TIPJ outplasty in our hospital. If Taka still remember, this is uh, our first encounter in Ho Chi Minh City. I was able to meet you and I was a group of Japanese surgeons that was very impressed by your technique and concept. But the same day, I went to Bangkok to listen to my lecturer. This was then. I was experiencing a very sense of science. Where it's an outcome scene in so opportunity to use implant came when I have that page, this patient, 52 years old lady, present with the osteoarthritis of the brain finger and middle finger. At that time, I was using pyrocarbon implant as my main um, weapon, and that case was done quite nicely. Actually, I obtained a nice range of motion. The patient was happy about the outcome. But that's not the end of story. With uh, rapidly, for just over one year time. There's already some problem with the implant, with the dislodgement, change in the positioning, and also losing the internal pain. That was not uncommon with the parkour implant because the technical is quite challenging with all the meticulous bone and cutting work, which is actually the surgeon will tend to using a smaller size implant because of worry about overcutting the bone. Squeaking is always a nuisance and there's no bone in the for the implant. So, therefore, weaker deformity and contraction is not allowed. So I take this opportunity to invite Dr. Minamikawa to Hong Kong to try to solve the patient's problem and work with my team, did a very nice surgery and fix the problem of this patient. He used the bone approach, and then he, he taught me how to actually expose the PIPJ by reflecting the uh, tendon sheep, do the bone broaching, and then inserting the John anchor, putting the implant, and I think very nice range of different stability and also beautiful as well. The patient's happy. And our team is also happy. Another opportunity came with a 37 years old uh, male pilot. He has suffered from a traumatic amputation in Malaysia when he was doing a relay competition there. Fortunately, the Malaysian community did a very beautiful replantation and saved his middle finger. But then that was complicated by slow PRPJ destruction, presumably due to some local infection. They were very brave enough, actually, they replaced the PRPJ with a pyrocarbon and obtained a nice. Um, the outcome at the beginning, but as you see that this always common with the power carbon impact, we tend to be undersized. And also, I think in this case, leading to recurrent instability, progressive outer deviation deformity and pain. This is a nuisance for the patient because actually the patient requires independent finger motion in order to control the pilot the panel or the flight. So therefore, you cannot uh, afford to have um, a rigid and um, um, useful middle finger. We discuss about the treatment option, including acceptable and observing, fusion, revision of plasty, vascular to joint transfer, the patient and we review weight application. Finally, we decide to perform the revision of plasty, despite there will be complexity like we will be bone graft or even some skin flap surgery. This is certainly not a simple case because we have to encounter various surgical challenges, including we have to reconstruct the bone defect, uh, we have to reconstruct the collateral ligament. And then, after we construct the flex, we then be able to insert the implant. The implant has to be primarily stable, and we have to release the soft tissue, and then we plan the soft tissue defect in case the defect can be closed primarily. It now has been done under just a single neuron window and a very flimsy extensor and flexor tendon. And this, we should minimize the chance of peroptic infection. So, a lot of preparation is required. The investigation showed that there's no evidence of infection. We also studied the bone defect using the CT and the mimic program, and then to anticipate the, the shape, the size of the bone graft that we require. So in 2009, August, we went into the revision surgery, took away the power of the implant, absolutely no bone new growth into the implant. We take the graft from the body press, carefully carbon treat it into the shape that we require, fix it with the surcharge file. So the we rebuild the base of the middle phallus, and afterward we start to prepare the canal using the drill and also the bone chain that leads slowly, slowly 
create the space to accommodate the implant inside. Finally, we insert the uh, implant, uh, fortunately without not too much difficulty, and then we're using the sum of soft tissue of the iron press as the collateral ligament reconstruction. It's way, and still it's not the end of surgery, we worry that the soft tissue will not be sufficient, so we carefully release the scar and implant the pep, and fortunately, the skin is enough to cover the wound without the need for using a distant flat. And at the end, it was quite decent looking here. So actually, the patient was already happy about the result. Saving life. Um, oh, how do you think? Yeah. <laughs> to some extent. Yeah, I think now it is. You can fit quite well. Uh, extension a little bit left. Uh, it's only around it. So we just followed the patient around 12 years after surgery. He was still has no pain, uh, still maintaining a functional finger, although there's some progressive fracture deformity because of the weakness of the extensor tendon. Collateral ligament is still very stable and there's a strong grip and pinch. Actually, this current major problem is the lack of sensation. This is the PIPJ because of the rotation. It's still hindering his work. And you can see radiologically, we see a lot of some new bone formation in which have to stabilize the implant. So there's no uh, problem with the uh, longevity of the implant. So recently, we reviewed our um, experience in our hospital, 18 patients with 19 joint replacement, one patient default follow-up. Um, they are relatively young patient, every 33 years age. The middle finger was involved most commonly, and we had more also tried in post traumatic causes. The mean follow-up is 6.5 years, the longest is around 151 months. The surgery was done uh, mostly under general system or plexus block. We're using six um, in dose approach, uh, particular for those in parameter arthritis, seven bone approach, and later we're using five uh, in lateral approach. The implant size selected is uh, commonly used is six and then seven or five. Here's a, uh, is a gentleman with the also right of middle finger, GIPJ. We perform the bone approach, enter the joint from the A, between A2 and A4, um, release the um, tendon shift together with the rostrum and then uh, flip to one side. Therefore, we can actually expose the PIPJ. And afterward, uh, we can put the implant as, um, as uh, in the common practice. And often you can also, in this case, we, have a, we can reinforce collateral ligament by putting suture to, uh, to uh, tighten the ligament. You can see at around seven years follow up, the patient has excellent clinical outcome with good appearance and also range of motion, good strength, and also stability of the joint. Looking radiologically, there's not much uh, bone instruction seen. In fact, the bone is uh, grow very healthy. Uh, the lecture approach is in interesting. Actually, I first discussed this with um, Dr. Mindy back to 2012 in Singapore. I believe at that time you have not also performed this uh, lateral approach. Actually, we found that in fact, your implant can also be placed into the PRP joint from the lateral side by then stocking the finger. And then afterward, we just repair the collateral ligament, and then it's still a very mobile and stable joint can achieve. Such constantly, we adopt this into our clinical series. Is a patient. Young 35 years old gentleman suffered from severe hand injury three years before, had been operated six times, still resulting in the painful, unstable, but yet mobile ring finger. And he obviously does not want to have a fusion because he's already fused a little finger. So we went into the joint place on using the uh, lateral pole from the outer patch, open the joint, and then uh, detach the collateral ligament from the origin of the proximal phalanx, and then we can cancel sort the of finger. We can do all the bone carpentry work through this approach quite easily. At the end, we fix the collateral ligament with the uh, long observable suture. We can achieve excellent range of motion, stability, and we can also verify by way of the see, see the stability of the implant and the joint as a whole. So we have a very fast reputation just using a body screen. We can allow the patient to move the finger. Uh, very soon after the surgery, and this is two years down the road, you can see excellent range of motion, good function, good stability, and also uh, excellent radiological outcome with minimal subsidence of implant load uh, with this uh, surgery. So you you vary the clinical outcome by looking at the range of motion, the pain score, radiological outcome, as well as patient satisfaction. Uh, they have a, in general, it's a good pain relief from three point five down to one point seven as a whole. And in terms of range of motion, preoperatively, they have a more limited range of motion around less than 30 degrees. But after surgery, there's some improvement extension, also more in this fraction range. So much so, actually, the arc of motion increased tremendously to 57 degrees as a whole. 
In terms of patient satisfaction, in general, patients are satisfied with surgery with a 3.2 out of 5 scale. Radiologically, we look at the radiologic subsidence uh, by looking at the distance of the pad together with the uh, article surface. In fact, we find that the airframe subsidence is very minimal, 0 0.1 millimeter, although two third patient in the proximal thorax demonstrates some degree of subsidence, which is less in the middle thorax. We don't know whether it is true subsidence because sometimes the, 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 the figure is so small that we, we don't know uh, whether it's due to the measurement or radiological measurement problem. But anyway, this is a lot of documentation. We find that dorsal approach has a, a little bit higher subsidence in the middle phase compared to the lateral approach and the bone approach. We are also looking at the bone resorption in the X ERI, uh, looking at the proximal phase and the middle phase, both from the coronal expert and the central expert. We grade the resorption from zero to three. Zero is just complete resorption. Three when there's a new bone formation. Look at the coronal uh, BRI. We actually um, study uh, the different zone starting from radial side uh, around the thread as uh, is the uh, P1 zone, and then around the sesco the CP2, around the uh, John Anchor CP3, the pet, and then on the side of the sesco CP4, and also the uh, owners of the here the CP5. Similarly, we also uh, study the middle pads in a similar manner from the radial to our aspect. And, and then we also look at the statutal uh, view starting from dorsal and then to the volar side, uh, dividing into one, two, three, and four, five, and similarly for the middle phalanx. So look at the index, actually in the proximal phalanx, we find that uh, in the coronals uh, plane, they uh, perform very well with a very minimal bone resorption. On, on the second plane, uh, we actually see more bone resorption in the zone one and the zone five meaning in the dorsal aspect and also the polar aspect near the thread area. And then in the middle phalanx, we are doing the coronal plane against in the zone one and the zone five, we see more bone resorption, same as the central plane, we also see zone one and zone five, while in the zone two and three and four, the relative perform very well with some uneven bone formation. In terms of complication, we have one implant package, one loosening, one patient has an atrial formation eventually leading to spontaneous fusion, one patient malnutrition without much skeletal significance. Two patients require uh, tendinitis, one infection. Finally, two patients will require revision fusion. Uh, here, actually, the patient that we saw, um, usual pyrocarbon replaced by self logging finger joint, but maybe the patient may not be a very good patient to receive joint replacement as he's still very young. So, with a few months of time, we already saw the breakage of the joint anchor pack, both from the proximally and the distally. But interestingly, the patient has not much symptom, and we have been observed for many years until finally last year, which is 12 years down the road. There's a significant implant displacement, and uh, even the sex school is broken, and therefore the patient has actually a small pain that she requires surgery. So then we have no choice except to fuse it, but it's not an easy fusion because we need to put a bone graft to fill up the bone defect, but fortunately the surgery can still be done and So in the literature, actually, um, we have uh, known that in, in, in average, the silicon implant and the power carbon implant can give rise to around 37 to 44 degree of range of motion. In our current study, we can achieve around 56 um, degree of motion, which I think is apparently some advantage. My uh, good friend, Dr. Komeshu, also um, evaluated the outcome of the self-working finger joint for a minimal two year follow up, every 44 months of follow up. As you demonstrate excellent result with good um, patient satisfaction and also osteoinflammation. So, in summary, uh, our experience in using the cell block implant joint is still a happy experience. Uh, we appreciate the very good and unique implant design enabling primary stability, extra stability, and anatomical motion and also osteoinflammation. We have excellent clinical and radiology come at the mean for 6.5 years. Uh, we saw bone resorption coming in so one and so five, but apparently they are not affecting the kind of outcome. But there's some other compensatory mechanism to stabilize the implant. And finally, we recommend natural approach as the you know, preferred approach because it's less invasive and you can also allow a fast rehabilitation. So thank you very much for your uh, kind listening. I hope we have more time to discuss and share some of the experience. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. PC. It's always a pleasure to uh, listen to you.
thank you for including the uh, case series and uh, explaining the comparison between the silicon replacement, the pericarbon, as well as the SLFJ. Before we go on to the next speaker, can we have uh, Dr. Ravi Mahajan, the current president of the Indian Society for the Surgery of the Hand, to speak a few words? Okay. Thank you, Kadani. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Satoshi Usami. Thank you for Dr. Jaron and Dr. Kadadi to pre prepare and conduct this seminar. I am happy to join this seminar and um, present my experience of silicone arthroplasty for small finger joint. Many presenters mentioned surface replacement type arthroplasty, uh, a self locking finger joint but I will share my case of uh, silicone arthroplasty. Especially uh, DIP arthroplasty is rare surgery over the world. I think it is challenging, but um, very interesting arthroplasty. Please start my presentation, Dr. Jaron. Dr. Satoshi Osami is from the Tokyo Hand Surgery and the Sports Medicine Institute. He's a plastic surgeon of Tokyo, a fine skilled microsurgeon. He's a plastic surgeon from the Medical Denial University. Over to you, Dr. Satoshi, thank you. It's Satoshi Usami from Tokyo, Japan. I appreciate the host of this seminar, Dr. Jaron, and the coordinator, Dr. Hamada. It's for six o'clock. It's a great opportunity to conduct this presentation. In this seminar, many presenters mention surface replacement type arthroplasty, but I'm going to present silicone implant arthroplasty for the osteoarthritis of PIP and DIP joint. Regarding to the history of silicone implant, Swanson presented and generalized the silicone type spacer for small finger joint arthroplasty in 1960s. Thereafter, so many types of silicone implant were developed and reported. Now in Japan, we can choose the three types of silicone implant, that is Swanson, Avant, and Integra for finger small joints. In our institution, Swanson and Avanta are used for DIP joint arthroplasty, and Avanta and Integra are used for PIP joint. First of all, I am going to show our clinical cases of silicone implant arthroplasty for PIP osteoarthritis. Usually, we select the dorsal approach with dorsal longitudinal incision for the replacement of osteoarthritis of PIP joint. I believe dorsal approach is simple and reliable, moreover, less invasive to soft tissue than polar approach. And recently, I sometimes use a small transverse incision with extensor tendon splitting. This approach is appropriate for the PIP joint without severe osteoarthritis and less invasive than conventional dorsal approach. Unfortunately, as for now, we cannot strongly recommend this approach because there are few clinical cases and outcomes. This is a short-term outcome of PIP silicone arthroplasty with 25 months follow-up. In 90 joints of 12 patients, PIP extension loss, PIP joint arc, and total active motion had been slightly better than preoperatively. And the bus score had been decreased significantly. And there is no remarkable complications at present. Now I show the clinical case of PIP arthroplasty. This case is a 60-year-old woman of left ring PIP osteoarthritis with severe deformity. PIP joint was replaced with integral silicone implant. The surgery was performed under local anesthesia with wide awake approach. In this case, excessor tendon was cut with V shaped incision. After insertion of silicone implant, excessor tendon was strongly sutured. This movie is an interoperative active range of motion after excessor tendon repair. At two years, six months after surgery, excess range of motion of ring finger and proper excess alignment are achieved. Next case is 71 years old woman with 
right index ring and little PIB joint osteoarthritis. G3 joints were replaced with integral implant. Before the surgery, PIP range of motion of index and ring finger were restricted. However, with one year short follow up, range of motion of replaced joint had been better than before the surgery. Several problems of PIP silicone implant arthroplasty were reported. That is, durability, lateral instability, synovitis, sclerosis, bone resorption, or implant subsidence. Especially, implant failure is one of the unavoidable complications in long term. Previously, the various rates of silicone implant failure were reported, and it mainly depends on patient sex, lifestyle, and occupation. Inconveniently, it is sometimes difficult to identify the implant failure only in X-ray appearance. The rate of silicon failure is not low percentage, but revision surgery is not always required if the affected finger is useful daily life. In general, silicon implant arthroplasty for PIP joint offers excellent pain relief and slight improvement of range of motion. Because this is a simple, not complicated surgical procedure, we consider that silicone implant arthroplasty is required as daily surgery from now on. Next, I move on the arthroplasty for DIP joint osteoarthritis. I think it is a challenging procedure. Indication of surgical intervention for DIP osteoarthritis is considered for a painful joint or a severe deformity. Generally, also this is applied for painful DIP osteoarthritis, but some patients reluctant to undergo arthrodesis. Recently, several joint movement preserving procedures are reported, and I'd like to present the DIP artificial arthroplasty with use of silicon spacer from now. For the DIP joint arthroplasty, Many previous papers recommend a simple dorsal approach. This schema is described by Zimmerman in 1989. There was a report about lateral approach preserving extra tendon, but I also prefer the dorsal approach for the IP joint. This schema shows our modified approach. In the actual surgery for DIP arthroplasty, we use crank shaped skin incision above a DIP joint. And after the dissection of subcutaneous tissue, excess tendon is cut with V shape in the terminal tendon. After exposure of DIP joint, the head of middle phalanges is removed with 3 mm length using bone saw. Thereafter, silicone implant is inserted. In the end, extensor tendon and joint capsule were strongly sutured. This movie is an interoperative active range of motion after extensor tendon repair. This is our outcomes of DIP silicone arthroplasty. In the 55 joint of 18 patient, DIP arc was decreased, but DIP extension loss was score and quick dash score was significantly improved. As for the complication, one case of silicon synovitis was observed in 43 years old woman who underwent arthroplasty with Swanson implant. At six months after surgery, her DIP joint was swelled and osteolysis around the silicon implant were identified in X-ray appearance. And finally, this implant was removed. I am going to show the case report. 66 years old woman compared to her right index and middle DIP joint deformity and pain. She underwent DIP arthroplasty using Avantasy implant.
for improving appearance and pain. At four years after surgery, the radial deviation of her finger was corrected with great satisfaction. This is active range of motion after surgery at four years. Her DIP joints are useful for skillful work. Next case is, is 55 years old woman of bilateral hand DIP osteoarthritis. Finally, she underwent four finger replacement by two times surgery. First, left index and the middle joints were replaced, and she satisfied with the result. Thereafter, she hoped to undergo the arthroplasty for right fingers at seven months after primary surgery. This movie is a range of motion of both hands at most recent arrival. Silicon arthroplasty of DIP joint could maintain joint arc and offer excellent pain relief. Regarding to the joint arc, even though the post-operative range of motion is not large, but this right arc would contribute to the patient's satisfaction and hand function. And post-operative pain relief is excellent, as are in PIP joint. Most serious problem of DIP silicone joint arthroplasty is post-operative lateral instability, and this procedure is not appropriate for hard worker. For resolving this problem, recently I insert the hinge of silicone implant into the medullary canal, preserving the lateral cortex of middle phalanges. Attached lateral band. This is a simple schema of our tip of silicone insertion for the IPR soprasty to preserve collateral ligament. But there is a problem of implant subsidence in long term follow up. I think additional follow up would be required. Thank you for hearing my presentation. I consider that DIP arthroplasty is one of the useful choices for Asian women who prefer skillful work. Thank you, Dr. Jiro. Okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, it's a wonderful talk, um, Satoshi. We're really impressed about that. Um, but Dr. Bharat, go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Satoshi, for, uh, for the impressive uh, results on the DAP silicon replacement arthroplasty. Thank you once again. Uh, can we have a few words of talk before we go on to the next speaker? I invite uh, Dr. Ravi Mahajan, the current president of the Indian Society for Surgery of the Hand. For a few words. Over to Dr. Ravi Mahajan, please. Uh, sir, has to unmute. Uh, sir, has to unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Vadi, for uh, uh, having me, uh, you know, for this. And I must thank uh, Dr. Terence for giving me this opportunity to be part of uh, this, uh, uh, you know, the journal club which we are having uh, of the East Asian Handmeet. And uh, in fact, I was uh, quite impressed uh, with the kind of results uh, which we have seen from the various uh, speakers from Japan and Hong Kong. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, till now, you know, my impression was that probably this is one surgery which is done very less often. And I think this is uh, so in India that we don't do too much of uh, these kind of joint, joint replacements uh, as compared to the major joint replacements which are being done in large numbers. But as our uh, population, aging population is increasing, I'm sure uh, we will need to do this kind of a surgery more often. And uh, the uh, I must thank the various speakers who have shared their uh, uh, rich experience in the PIP and the DIP joint replacement with us. And I'm going, I'm sure uh, this is going to be very, very useful 
uh, in India for us in coming years and uh, where we will have more and more uh, uh, these kind of patients and we'll be able to give them, uh, you know, probably as good results as we have seen. And with these results, I thank all the uh, speakers uh, again, you know, for sharing their rich experience with us. And thank you so much, Terence, for having me for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir has been uh, very, you know, uh, generous and very strong supportive in this endeavor. Um, last last year we had this Indo Japan handbeat, um, so sir was the one main instrumental in uh, you know making this happen. Uh, again, he's uh, here with us, so it's extremely you know uh, a great honor for us all of us to have him uh, at this juncture. So thank you very much, despite your busy schedule and the uh, you know your tight schedule. Uh, thank you once again, sir. Doctor Bharat, please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. So we go to the next. Uh, Speaker Dr. Takeyasu Toyama from the Kansai Medical University Hospital, a student of Dr. Minamikawa, and he's doing a research in the field of peripheral nerve. Over to you, Mr. Takeyasu, will be speaking on the extended dorsal splitting approach for surface replacement arthroplasty. AAP joint. Hello, everyone. My name is Takeyasu Toyama. I belong to the Department of Orthopedics, Kansai Medical University. I usually work with Dr. Minamika and Dr. Hamada. Thank you to Mr. Jerome, Mr. Ka uh, Dr. Kaladi for giving me to the opportunity to make such a presentation. My presentation is about the results of surface implant arthroplasty by extent of dorsal central splitting approach. And my opinion is that even a young like me do implant arthroplasty using the dorsal central splitting approach. Watch a video about our surgical procedure and the complication case. Please play my video. My presentation is about the results of surface implant arthroplasty by extended dorsal central splitting approach. There are various approaches for PIP implant arthroplasty. We are currently using extended dorsal central splitting approach for most cases. Today, I talk about report our procedure and clinical outcomes. This is our surgical procedure. First, a midline longitudinal incision is made on the dorsal side of PIP to expose the extensor mechanism. A midline incision is made on central cord to enter the joint. And Can you hear? No, we're not able to hear. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Um, it's made on the side of PIP to expose the extensor mechanism. Is it okay? A mitraincion is made on central cord to enter joint. Okay. And the attachment of central cord and soft dish are peeled from bone, like peeling the fruits. At this point, he has taken note to disturb any continuity of the collateral ligament. Head resection is performed to disturb the collateral ligament. The starter hole is inserted into the canal, going deep enough so that the hole is guided into the center of the intermediary canal. At this point, you may check X ray image to confirm the exact.
Dr. Bharat. Okay. Dr. Bharat. Uh, yes, Terence. Can yeah. we move on to the next talk and uh, we will uh, sort it out this uh, uh, with the audio system. Okay. So, uh, the next speaker is uh, Kenjo Oira. He's from the Namba Hand Center, very active hand therapist. And as you all know that it's well said that a uh, hand surgeon is known by the hand therapist working with him or her because ultimate function is based on the therapy followed by the hand surgery. So over to you, Dr. Kenji Ohira. Thank you for allowing me to join this webinar. I'm Kenji Ohira and my talk is post-operative arthroplasty uh, in PIP joint. So please start my presentation. Finger implant arthroplasty is still a controversial topic today. I will talk about our recent work for surface replacement arthroplasty in patients with Bouchard's node. The ideal finger arthroplasty is to provide pain relief, to restore a functional ROM and finger appearance. Since March 2019, surgical technique in our clinic was changed to the use of a self rocking finger joint with dorsal tendon splitting approach for patient with Bouchard's node. This slide shows general principles about finger implant arthroplasty for the PIP joint. Hume ETAL reported the functional ROM to be 36 degrees to 86 degrees. Swanson ETAL advocated the index and the middle fingers are mainly used for pinch activities and ring and little fingers are for grasp activities. Little shares compare the Swanson implant and the surface replacement implant. Unlike the Swanson implant, that is not recommended for index finger. A surface replacement implant can be used for all digits. This is our recent work for surface replacement arthroplasty in patients with Bouchard's node. There were 26 fingers of 70 patients. Mean age at the surgery was 64 years and mean follow-up period is 7.9 months. Post-operative rehabilitation consists of varieties of ROM exercises and also cells. At first week, PIP joint is kept in extension position to consider about post-operative edema and prepared extensor. From third week, vigorous ROM exercises are initiated to obtain functional ROM. However, if the ulnar collateral ligament is briefed, we need to consider about the lateral stability. It will be postponed the extension sprint, body taping, or the start of vigorous ROM exercises. Initial three weeks must prevent excessive flexion because the excessive flexion and or power grip would produce a rupture of the repaired extensor. Cost of FDS is progressively increased, more than 60% of maximum grip. As flexion forces increased initially, rise the risk of the extensor tendon rupture. After three weeks, progressive ROM exercise is, is gradually started because even the extensor tendon is tightly repaired. An extension lag will be occurred. Also, at three weeks, the fibroblast and plugin are formed in a plane perpendicular to the long axis of the tendon and revascularization increases at the repair site.
functional ROM should be achieved early because long-lasting contractures are irreversible due to its structural alternation of the joint capsule. In addition, previous literature shows formation of osteophyte after finger arthroplasty, leading the limitation of ROM. To prevent this formation, a pathway for joint movement should be provided as soon as possible. This slide shows the technique of blocking exercises to maximize PIP joint movement and DIP joint movement each other. This slide shows the technique of press and hold to induce maximum tendon gliding. This slide shows sustained mobilization one of joint mobilization techniques, holding the proximal phalanx steadily, gradually increasing pressure on the middle phalanx is applied to flex PIP joint. If joint speed fight is inadequate, the implant can break due to the massive bending force. PIP joint should be maintained in extension position until soft tissue maturity. In general, flexion forces in digits are stronger than extension. Moreover, central slip was sectioned and repaired in order to insert the implant. For index finger, or the case with ligament leafing, is requires more careful observation of its lateral stability. Lateral angulation is minimum and the PIP joint is extended. Graspel figured out sprinting for 6 to 12 hours per day is effective and that should be continued as long as it is effective. Body taping is used for keeping the damaged finger in natural position to encourage early mobilization with healthy digit. This is useful for index arthroplasty and or arthroplasty with ligament reefing. We apply the contact relax one of PNF techniques for grip training. Feature of this is to allow the rotatory component which leads the muscle relaxation and increase in ROM. This is the result of our method. ROM of PIP joint was significantly improved after surgery. Pain bus and quick dash score were also improved significantly. There were two complications, one dislocation and one swell neck deformity. This is a comparison between ROM of index fingers and of others. Unlike index finger, ROM of other fingers was improved significantly, and that was close to Hume's functional ROM and Peltzscher's ROM balls. The reason of flexion limitation in index finger could be differences of the main law, which is pinch activities. Until 2019, our clinic used SCRFJ with Bora approach to treat patient with Bouchard's node. However, a few patients complained persistent pain and sensory disturbance at operational site or early contracture at the operated PIP joint. Considering this, the causes of pain and sensory disturbance may be occurred by damage at borough digital nerves, as PIP joint was dorsally dislocated to insert the implant. About the early contracture, borough site of digit contains tendon chiasma, where frequently occurred the tendon adhesions.
she is our representative case. It's 55 years old lady. SLFJ was inserted using a dorsal tendon splitting approach to both hands. Her ROM improved remarkably at final evaluation. Now she is satisfied to do her job and play the tennis as her hobby. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kenji Oira, for the excellent functional outcome <clears throat> of the therapy of these patients with PAP treatment orthoplasty. Now, uh, have we started out with uh, Dr. Takeyasu Toyama? Thanks. Yeah, results of surface implements replacement arthroplasty by the extended dorsal. Results of surface implant arthroplasty by extended dorsal central splitting approach. There are various approaches for PIP implant arthroplasty. We are currently using extended dorsal central splitting approach for most cases. Today, I talk about report our procedure and clinical outcomes. This is our surgical procedure. First, a midline longitudinal incision is made on the dorsal side of PIP to expose the extensor mechanism. A midline incision is made on central cord to enter joint, and the attachment of central cord is a peel from bone, like peeling the fruit. At this point, care is taken not to disturb any continuity of the collateral ligament. Head resection is performed to start to the collateral ligament. The starter hole is inserted into the canal, going deep enough so that the hole is guided into the center of the intermediary canal. At this point, you may check X-ray image to confirm the exact location. Then insert the joint anchor. Before inserting the joint anchor of middle parallax, make two holes on the dorsal side of the middle parallax with K wire and pass an absorbable suture with needle on both ends so that the central cord can be easily reconstructed later. Removal of osteoplite was performed again. In particular, residual osteoplite on the polar side of the proximal parallax and middle parallax showing the stripe that cause poor ROM at the early stage. Therefore, sufficient removal of this part is very important. Check the movement and the lateral instability with trial. If flexor tendon adhesion are suspected preoperatively, perform flexor tendon manipulation. If there is lateral instability or loose joint, augmentation of the collateral ligament with no absorbable suture is useful to control the balance. Insert the implant and reconstruct the central cord. The wound is closed. This is Operation Movie. This case is 59 years woman with bony ankylosis on middle finger. A midline incision is made on central cord to enter the joint. While being careful to protect the collateral ligament, the collateral ligament attachment on the proximal phalanx side and the middle phalanx side is minimally released, and osteotomy line is identified. Osteotomy line was checked by inserting a K wire when performing osteotomy because this is a bony and cross case. Insert start hours and dimming.
make two holes on the dorsal side of the middle phalanx with K wire. Insert the joint anchor. Before inserting the joint anchor on the middle phalanx side, pass the non absorber suture through the hole. Radical removal of osteophyte was performed. Check the ROM and lateral instability with trial. In this case, the preoperative active PIP joint motion was not good, so FDP manipulation was performed. The collateral ligament was sutured.
Thank you, uh, Dr. Takei Asu Toyama, for the excellent uh, talk for the extended dorsal splitting approach to the videos. Do we have any questions for the participants, uh, Terence? Okay. Uh, so, what are your indications for uh, cementing? Cement? Yeah. Cementing? You will, yeah. The cementless uh, surface replacement also plastic, we have seen the videos and the expo excellent exposition. So, what are your indications for using a cement in a surface replacement arthroplasty? Any Anyone can take the question. 10 years ago, we can use linseade type, cementing type. Now, we we do not use cement cement type surface replacement. Another also another presentation some comments. Professor Miramikawa. Yes, Terence, any other questions? Uh, I don't think uh, we have any, I mean, a lot of questions are there. Uh, considering the time factor, um, we will, uh, uh, I think we'll uh, wind up this uh, session uh, with uh, quick uh, closing remarks from uh, Dr. Yoshitaka Hamada and uh, Dr. Miramika. Finally, Dr. Bharat. And my opinion, I can use index, uh, for index, a little bit tight. Um, Dr. Morisawa, my question is, if you use more large size implant and uh, tight use, I can use, safely use index finger, my personal opinion. How do you think? Uh, I think for, for the index finger, um, First priority is removal of, removal of the pain. The second is range of motion. So uh, uh, one case revision, revision and fusion, but other case, a good um, result because uh, range of motion is not so good, but uh, preserve, preserving collateral ligament is important. So uh, I think if, Mm, to do uh, index finger TFA, um, first priority is uh, preservation of uh, collateral ligament and uh, cut the bone mm -hmm. not so much. Mm. Yes, uh, not not loose, a little bit yeah, yeah, tight and yes. large, large, yeah, yeah. large size mm. choice. Yes, more yes, large. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes, yes. Thank you. Larger the better to prevent the incidence of uh, subsidence and loosening. And instability. Are there any questions from other uh, presenters? Hi, hi. If if, uh, if uh, there are no questions, I want. Oh, excuse me, uh, Dr. Hamada. Uh, yes. Can I uh, have a one question? Uh, e index finger, uh, the also plus T is uh, sometimes. Uh, cause the instability. So I think uh, in the index finger, uh, stability is the most important, post-operatively. Yes. So uh, there is uh, any presenter uh, who uh, selects the arthrosis in PIP uh, in the uh, index finger uh, instead of the uh, arthroplasty of surface replacement type. I I I did as uh, I changed the tension index usually more tight yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, bigger <laughs> size surface large size implant and uh, tight tension and safe. I, I think. Uh, uh, how about the uh, uh, indication of also this is uh, in index finger index more yeah, than thirty yeah. degrees usually usually. Usually, generally, more than 30 <laughs> yeah, degrees yeah, yeah. or uh, 
severe trust to the other side. Uh, okay. But, um, uh, ex excuse me. Um, uh, Thank you. Uh, ah, uh, mm, I, mm, Dr. Usami. Uh, sure. Um, mm. I, I, um, I agree your uh, opinion partly. Uh, I, uh, I think it depends on the uh, uh, stability of the PIP uh, joint. So for severe case, I agree um, your opinion. So uh, indication of also this, not so severe type uh, also plasty. I think. Thank you for Morisawa. I agree uh, as a part of your opinion. Mm. Mm, yes, mm, of course, more than 30 degrees of a very severe case. Sometimes, uh, usually, a is selected. Thank you, Dr. Hamada. And finally, if there are no questions, um, please, Dr. Minamikawa, there a future for the implant are rusty. Ah, yes. Okay. Ah. Jerome, no questions. Um, Dr. Okay. Minamika, please unmute. Please unmute. Dr. Minamika, please unmute. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you can have. Okay. The concluding concluding remarks from Professor Minamikawa. Okay. Um, for the future, like my last slide, surface and osteo integration is the way to go because you see the history we run history many many doctors have same failure over and over again so this is the way to go i believe strongly but probably silicon will still continue because the company is easy to sell the silicon. It's cheaper and easy to make and more profitable. And the comp small company who make the good implant need money and the small companies always will, will over, take over from big company. It's defeated many places. So it is very difficult to grow. That's my thinking right now. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Minamikawa. Thank you, Dr. Minamikawa. So, I, uh, please go ahead, Jerome. Yep. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, one and all, for uh, joining uh, in this uh, interesting uh, webinar. Um, thank you, Dr. Hamada, Dr. Minamikawa. Um, Dr. Uh, um, Yamamoto, Dr. Satoshi, uh, Dr. Toyama, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, Kenji uh, Ohira. So um, thank you once again for all this, uh, you know, uh, great talk. And this is a real event we all enjoyed. Um, before that, the last two, uh, you know, conclude. Uh, thanks, Dr. Barak, uh, for your fantastic moderating, especially uh, you made us feel that we are in Japan. Um, all your uh, you know kind words in Japanese uh, was also amazing. Uh, once again, thank you, uh, our president of uh, Indian Society of Hand Surgery and also the president of the Indian Orthopedic Association uh, who has spent their valuable time uh, uh, despite the business schedule. Um, thank you, one and all, and uh, wishing you all safe and healthy. Thank you. Bye bye. Arigato. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. Nihonga <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you all. Thank you all.
あ逆に課題<笑>お疲れ様ですお疲れ様です,ますはい。